All right, now there are, a, there are more tools that you can use to help speed up your retopology workflow. So down here, you'll see a huge list of commands for your retopology mesh. Now this list, though, will change depending on certain factors. So the very first thing I'm going to show you is how to make selections on your retopology mesh and how you can use those selections to further your retopology. So if I go up to the Select tool under Add Geometry, you'll see I the top menu changes. So you see, I have this options for selecting vertices, edges, or faces. Select select some edges first, and you'll see edges will start to highlight here. So if I select now the ring here will determine how big of an area you're selecting. you're selecting. So if I have a very large brush, you'll see I select quite a few edges. If I have a very small brush, I can only select you know one at a time. Now I don't have to hold down shift to select several edges, but if you hold control, that will deselect them. Now once you have them selected, right clicking and dragging will not change your brush size that will actually slide the edges around. So you would need to clear your selection in order to change the brush size. I tend to leave it very small because otherwise I might select edges, hold on, I might select edges that I don't want to, like those two. So I'll just select these two. And now if you go down to commands, you'll see that there's a few options here that we didn't have earlier. Several of these haven't moved at all, but a couple new ones that were added by doing that are things like rotating, and that will sort of spin edges, but probably one of the more powerful would be extrude. So if I hit extrude, then you'll see I am extruding the edge to create some new faces. So I could bring this all the way down here, for instance, and it'll keep extruding unless I hit escape. And I can shrink these down a little bit and I can start to add more divisions and you see that's a very fast way to add a lot of polygons. I could use my brush tool to then clean that up a little bit more. Let's select some more. So go back to select. Let's select a face this time. I'll select this one. And then we get new tools here. Like say normal extrude. So this actually functions very identically in fact to an extrude option in most 3D modeling applications. Now when you do this it's no longer following the details of the mesh but this can be an easy way to create raised detail, especially if your model has a lot of very small spikes or protrusions. Instead of having to retopologize around that, you can just create one face on top of it and extrude that face outward. Now it's worth mentioning that when your retopology mesh does not actually touch the surface of your model, you need to be very careful when you're moving it. If I were to move this point, it will immediately snap back to the mesh. So I don't want to touch this anymore if I wanted to leave it that way. Now in this mesh that doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. So I'm just going to undo that extrusion. But if I go and select it again, then I have a few other options here. Like say cloning the face and moving it to another portion of the mesh. This is more useful if you have uh, several different, if you have several polygons selected, like if I wanted to say copy this whole segment and move it to somewhere else, then the clone tool is a great way to do that. Let me select my retopology group there. But other things you can do with selections is you can move the selections around independent of your high detail mesh. So if I were to select these faces, I can hit transform 
and I can move them off of the surface. And this can help, especially if you're working with a surface mesh that has a lot of noisy details. And having the retopology mesh snap to the surface may not always be desirable. So in the case that you may not like that, say like right here for instance, the retopology mesh is much lower than the high detail mesh. So I might grab that face and just move it a little farther out. I could also select individual vertices and, and move those as well, just so you see it's not the high, re, high res mesh isn't protruding out quite as much. Select another one, transform it. So now you see when I look at the retopology mesh, the high res mesh is not pointing through. So those are some fine-tuned adjustments that you can make. Now a couple other tools to bear in mind when you're working with retopology is the subdivision tool. Now you have subdivide down here in the commands and you can actually just subdivide a selection. So if I clear that selection and I select this face, I could subdivide it. Now this will make this polygon a uh, five-sided polygon, which is not always desirable, but if I had a, if I just real quickly make something here, but if I had this separate shell, I could select it and just subdivide that area. Otherwise, what will happen is you will subdivide, you can subdivide the entire mesh. So I go to subdivide, then you'll see the entire mesh gets smooth. So if you're working on a project where you need your mesh to be very smooth and you want there to be absolutely zero faceting, then you'll probably want to retopologize at a fairly low resolution like this and then subdivide it in order to get that additional smoothness and detail. That way you don't have to place all of these polygons by hand. Now if you're working on a symmetrical model and you want to apply your symmetry, then you can go up to retopo and then you can apply symmetry to current layer, which that layer, by the way, refers to these layers in your retopo objects window. Apply symmetry to current layer, and it may seem like nothing had happened. In fact, if we turn off symmetry, our mirrored mesh goes away. But all you need to do is just, I'm fairly certain this is just a bug, but if you just click on your the mesh you can see, then the mirrored side of it will show up. Now, mine's obviously showing as two separate colors because the two of them are not actually connected in any way. But once you do that, the symmetry will have been applied and your mesh will be ready for the next step of production, which is usually UV unwrapping. And we will talk about that in the next video.